cabalgados. Me enseñó a amarlos, a cuidarlos, a respetarlos. Hola, mis amigos. If you love watching Netflix, then maybe you have had the idea of learning Spanish with Netflix. But how exactly do you do this? In this video, I am sharing with you my ultimate guide for learning Spanish with Netflix. One thing I love to do is explain what exactly does learning mean. So you could learn new words and phrases, but from specific Spanish-speaking countries, you could be learning a lot of cultural aspects of the Spanish language as well, like food, history, music, and important holidays that you can also learn many different accents as well and learn different facial expressions and hand gestures just by watching TV shows and movies on Netflix. All of these things are extremely important when it comes to learning the Spanish language. One thing I love to do before I even start watching a movie or TV show is read the title. This one show I'm looking at right now is called Tijuana and maybe you're wondering what is uh, Tijuana? KS Tijuana. And Tijuana is a city in Mexico, una ciudad en Mexico. So that already gives you some idea, possibly, of what this show could be about. So that's why I like to start with the title, because it gives me some information about what this show is going to be about. And then you can already start to imagine what type of Spanish words may be used in this type of TV show. So in this case, since we're talking about Tijuana, or Tijuana is the title, then maybe they're going to be using a lot of slang that is used in Mexico. And now we can move on to reading what the description is of the first episode. In this case, the, the title of the first episode is The Candidate or El Candidato en Español. And it says, while Eugenio Robles climbs in the polls as an unlikely front runner for Baja California governor, Publica, publication, <laughs> publication Frente Tijuana reports a candidate swap. So that gives us a lot of information of what this first episode is about. So we can start again to make a lot of assumptions and think of different vocabulary words that will be used in this particular episode. Now, depending on your level and your style of learning Spanish, maybe you don't want to do this at all and you want to figure everything out on your own. And this is perfectly fine because maybe you want to challenge yourself and I have done this as well. If you're a complete beginner, this may be too big of a challenge for you and you may just want to go with the method of reading up a little bit about the movie or TV show before you start. And in general, you know how difficult it can be to actually start to understand a TV show even in your native language. Just because things are very confusing for maybe the first 15 or 20 minutes of a movie or the first five to 10 episodes of a TV show. It just takes a little time. One of the many challenges of learning Spanish with Netflix is trying to figure out what in the world is going on in that TV show or movie that you're watching. So one thing that I like to do is to break that down and try to make it as simple as possible. So I like to think about what is the overall story of this movie or TV show. De que se trata la historia? And then also, what are the different characters that are in the story? And what are their main roles in the story? So you can think about different words in Spanish, like, okay, maybe they are una hermana or un hermano, so they are brother or sister. Un amigo o una amiga, so a friend. Un jefe o una jefa, uh, which is like a boss, family, so familia. Un abogado, una abogada, o la policía, so a lawyer or the police. Also, what are the personalities like of these different characters? Are they very celoso? Are they very celosas? So are they very jealous? Uh, maybe there are a lot of rom romantic relationships that are in these shows and there's a, a lot of drama. So that's something that you would want to be aware of. Are they very amable? Are they very kind? Malo, are they bad? Are they viejo or vieja? Are they very old? Also, knowing what the overall plot is of that movie or TV show will also help you give you a really good idea of what is going to be happening in the TV show. So as far as the show I was just mentioning earlier, Tijuana, uh, we know that it looks like there's going to be some, some conversations about la noticia, so about like the news, about periodistas, about news reporters, and then also a little bit about politics as well, so la política. You should also pay attention to what location that these characters are at as well. So what are the ubicaciones? Maybe they are in su casa, maybe they're in their house, maybe they're in their uh, vecindario, maybe they're in their neighborhood, they're in, in el trabajo. 
Another thing that you can focus on is the specific time period that the TV show or movie is set in. So some different words that may be related to this are epoca, which is like a specific time or period in Spanish, and then década, which is a decade, and then also siglo, which is a century. I'm saying many different words in Spanish because this is exactly what I have heard while watching Netflix, and I'm sure you will as well. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, that's really cool that you can learn all this vocabulary, Joshua, but I can't understand native Spanish speakers at all. I mean, they talk way too fast. And although that may be true, that is the other big challenge of learning Spanish with Netflix is that you have to increase your listening skills to be able to comprehend a lot of these things that I'm talking about right now. One tip that I have for you is to get very familiar with the Spanish alphabet. So how does every letter sound? This is very important because Spanish speakers are using the Spanish alphabet when they are speaking. And that is very important, right? And all that takes is just a quick one minute or two minute review of the Spanish alphabet on YouTube or just on your own. Another tip that I have for you is to focus on the Spanish words that you already know. And this prevents you from having that mentality that you don't know anything at all when you're watching these movies or TV shows. But I'm sure that you can pick out at least a few words and then you'll use those few words to try to figure out what is going on. For example, let's say that there was a conversation between two characters in a TV show for 10 minutes, but the only things that you could really grasp were la cena, a la 7 p.m., la familia, and mi casa. But just those words right there, you can already start to get a picture in your head of what is going on. Don't forget about repetition and don't feel embarrassed or very ashamed if you can't comprehend just after watching an episode for the first time. Maybe you have to repeat it five times or even 20 times before you really start to comprehend what's going on or maybe it's just five minutes or ten minutes that you are just really struggling with comprehending so all you have to do is just keep repeating that same part over and over again until you start to increase your listening comprehension i don't want to give you the wrong impression that if you watch a movie five times or ten times in one day that you're automatically just going to know everything that was said in that same day so this could actually take a lot of time. It could take months or it could take days or weeks. It just depends. One strange issue that you may come across is that you actually did understand what word that that Spanish speaker said and you know exactly how it was spelled, but you have no idea what it means. In this case, the only thing that you would have to do to get full comprehension of that Spanish word is look it up in a Spanish dictionary. And the same thing goes for different types of grammar rules that you are not very familiar with. So that can make it very difficult to increase your listening comprehension as well. One thing that you can do if you are extremely confused is to just do a quick search in a Spanish grammar book like this so you can start to get a little bit more comprehension of what is going on. Maybe you heard one of the actors or actresses say a particular Spanish verb, but you don't know exactly which conjugation that they used. You can also do a nice little quick search in a Spanish verb book like this. And you can find these different resources linked below in the description box of this video. When your listening comprehension fails you, your eyes will not. So make sure that you are analyzing the different hand gestures that these actors are doing. What facial expressions are they making? Are they sad? Do they look angry? So these different things will definitely help you understand what is going on in that particular scene. So giving you an actual picture of what is going on so you don't have to guess all the time. And the same thing with lips as well. I've noticed that trying to read lips has really helped me to actually try to figure out what that Spanish speaker is saying. Also, make sure that you are analyzing the surroundings as well. What is going on in the background? Are they in a restaurant? Are they at home? Are they surrounded by friends? Are they surrounded by the police? Or even the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, for example. So this is a very special holiday in Mexico. So let's say that you didn't know any vocabulary that 
details related to this particular holiday, one thing that you can do is just look at everything that is going on. So maybe you're going to see a lot of altars. You're going to see a lot of skeletons. You start to analyze the different things that are going on in this particular scene. And then just those alone, without even understanding what the what vocabulary that they're using can really help you understand what's going on. Netflix has some very useful features. One thing that you can do is watch a movie or a TV show in English, maybe one that you have already watched previously, but have a Spanish voiceover. And then you can also put on some Spanish subtitles. Another thing that you can do is watch a movie or a TV show that is already in Spanish, but have the subtitles in English, or you can have the subtitles in Spanish. And whichever way that you choose really is all up to you. So it all depends on what your current language goals are. And there is a huge debate which one is better. The only thing that I would say about that is the ultimate goal for me, for all Spanish learners, including myself, is to get to the point where we are having the subtitles in Spanish and we are listening in Spanish as well. And then hopefully we can take those subtitles off and we're only listening in Spanish. Now let's transition into my favorite part of this guide for learning Spanish with Netflix and that is increasing our Spanish speaking fluency. And to increase our Spanish speaking fluency, we are going to be doing a lot of imitation. We're gonna be doing imitation verbally, but then also physically. So verbally with the words that we are saying and the phrases that we are saying, and then physically with our hand gestures. So we're, I'm bringing that back again. And then also our facial expressions as well. Bueno, te los caballos? Bueno, Suspiro es. Suspiro es. Hoy por hoy. Hoy por hoy. El mejor pura sangre de México. Es el mejor pura sangre de México. Nació en California. Nació en California. Una cosa grave. En Kentucky. ¿Alguna vez has ido al Derby? No. Nunca. No, nunca. Pero está bonito. So as you can see right there, I got really stuck and I could not repeat what he just said because that was a little bit too fast for me. But what I would do is just listen to that particular part over and over again. And then after that, I would try to repeat what he just said. And if I keep getting stuck, I just repeat the same exact process. As you can see, this is definitely going to challenge you because it's not just about saying words and phrases, right? But it's about how you are saying them, how that particular act is expressing themselves when they are saying these words and their accent as well. In this case, this is uh, this is called Tijuana. So there are a lot of Mexican actors. So they are using different Mexican accents. And I was just doing that imitation by ear. So with no subtitles, but now I'm going to put the subtitles on and we'll see how well that I get through this. El suspiro. El suspiro. ¿Le molesta si grabo? ¿Le molesta si grabo? No, no, espérate. Vamos a poco a poco. Hay que romper el turrón. Si sabes lo que es tu turrón, ¿no? Sí. Bueno, ¿te gustan los caballos? Sí, ¿te gustan los caballos? Suspiro es. Hoy por hoy. El mejor pura sangre de México. Aunque nació en California. Se va a consagrar en todo. ¿Alguna vez has ido a la Derby? No. No. No, nunca. En lo que entra, vamos a estar ahí. Rapidito. Y vamos a ganar. Me enamoré de los caballos cuando tenía siete años. Mi papá me enseñó a cabalgarlos. Me enseñó a amarlos, a cuidarlos, a respetarlos. As you can see there, I did a lot better with the subtitles and now I can actually see why it was challenging for me because there is a few different words that I did not understand at all. And then there was also one phrase that I've never heard before in my life and that was, Oi por oi. As far as how long that you should do this little imitation exercise for, I'm gonna leave it up to you and you can figure out what is best for you for your study session. Make sure that you are taking a ton of notes when you are watching Netflix. So we're not going to be just listening and that's it because that's basically how you forget everything that you were just watching. We wanna make sure that we are taking detailed notes. So take notes of the different locations that you are seeing in that movie or TV show also again different personalities and then also special days relationships who has a relationship with who uh, as well different words and phrases in general that you do not know so for example I'm gonna write down 
oi for oi, and the other verb as well that I did not know at all when I was doing that little imitation exercise. And then later on, I'm going to review them. And that's also going to help with my Spanish speaking fluency because now I am using these different words and phrases that native Spanish speakers are using. Now, what do you think? Can you learn Spanish with Netflix? Let me know in the comment section below. If you want some Spanish TV show recommendations, make sure that you tap or click on the screen to watch this video. Thank you for watching. This is Spanish Blueprints. My name is Joshua and have fun binging Spanish TV shows and movies.